And the tip is won by Oklahoma Christian University. And a whistle already blown and not quite sure what the violation was there, but Oklahoma Christian will take the ball out of bounds there. Your St. Mary's Rattlers, 3-1 and one entering into play today. That one loss in overtime to Tarleton State, an absolute nail-biter. And then on the other side, the Eagles of Oklahoma Christian University, also 3-1. and one. Coming off of a very impressive season last year, they went 20-13 and 13 and went farther in the NCAA tournament than they ever had before. I'm Joe Rodriguez being joined by Brian Maguiwan. Brian, uh, exciting basketball whenever the Lady Rattlers take the court. What are you looking out of them for today? I'm looking for the Lady Rattlers to continue with their high octane offense, fast paced, push the ball down the court and get some easy scores. They're really exciting to watch. And I look forward to Kiara Etheridge, who has already made an impact early on in her Rattler career, notching a single game record last home game with 20 rebounds and adding 18 rebounds in the win against Texas A&M Kingsville. And Etheridge right on cue pulls down her first board of the game. St. Mary's looking to get on the board offensively and Etheridge will be the one to draw the foul. Let's go on ahead and meet your Rattler starting lineup first. Number three, Desi Elias. Jackie Woods also at the other guard. And then Leah Kiowa will play the three spot. The two uh, big men will be Kiara Etheridge and Morgan Pullins. Etheridge is fouled there by Sydney Hill, and she knocks down the first free throw. And then on the other side for the Oklahoma Christian University Eagles, it'll be Logan McKee, Sydney Hill, Caitlin Morris, Andy Wayne, and Rose Hamilton to start out. And Etheridge makes the second free throw as well. So St. Mary's with the early 2-0 lead. I got to tell you, Brian, looking through Oklahoma Christian University, reading up on them a bit, a very impressive team. 3-1 and one on the season, obviously a good start, but just really an impressive team. They scored over 100 points already on the season, but they can also get it done defensively. They've won some close nail biters as well. So be sure to look out for them in this game. And the player to look out for the most, if you ask me, is Emma Gade off the bench. She's a transfer from a D1 school, so obviously one to watch here today. Etheridge, the fake at the shot. No, what a pass by Etheridge to Pullins there. That was a great dribble penetration and dish by Etheridge right there. The defense got caught looking at the ball and lost track of the offensive player. And it's something that we usually see on a Jason's Martins team is just tremendous versatility out of his players. All of the players on the court can play multiple positions and can guard multiple Ooh. positions as Morgan Pullins, the beneficiary of a great assist once again. That was a great find right there by Leah Kiowa. And with that, we're going to go on ahead and have a timeout. We'll head there with them. So you're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. And welcome back, everyone, to Bill Grehe Arena. Joe Rodriguez, Brian Magluio on here bringing you some women's basketball today. And beautiful Bill Grehe Arena. And Morgan Pullins with the steal. She's going down the floor. Left-handed layup, no good. As Pullins, her first miss of the game. But so far, she's been the number one scoring option for St. Mary's. Able to beat the, that man-to-man -man defense and with some great cuts and even better passes from her teammates. And now we see an entire platoon swap going to take place for the Oklahoma Christian University Eagles. Five new fresh players and fresh faces coming in for them. And it's kind of like a hockey team, changing out the entire <laughs> team right there. Yes, indeed. And Oklahoma Christian, they run 16 players deep here tonight. So a great deal of players traveling down to San Antonio to 
play in today's matchup against the Rattlers. Elias gets a step and lays it in for two. And Brian, something I really like out of the Rattlers to start this game, all of their shots have been in the paint or wide open jumpers. The Rattlers very aggressive early on, attacking the paint, like you said. And right there, Elias was able to get by her defender and get the easy two. And Elias now trying to generate the steal with some active hands. And we have a whistle here. And I did not see the fist go up to call a foul. And I think they're going to call a kick ball there as the ball did get tangled up with the Eagles player's legs. So it'll be St. Mary's basketball. And now we see Bria Bell checking in for the first time today. Morgan Pullins will head to the bench. Pullins looks a little bit shaken up following that uh, little collision right there. Mm -hmm. Let's go on ahead and meet the five new Eagles on the floor who are playing in a zone defense as compared to the starters who are playing in man-to-man. -man. You have Ashi Martin, Mackenzie Stanford, Krista Stevens, Daisha Gonz Gonzalez, and then, of course, Mika Havens as well as Leah Keogh gets on the board with two. And the St. Mary's Rattlers have jumped out 10 to nothing here in the early stages. And they create another steal. Bria Bell getting her hands in the passing lane. But Desi Elias passes up that three. And instead, they try to pound it into the post. And that one, an errant pass. Bell and Etheridge not able to make the connection. And Elias not able to chase it down. So the ball will go over to... O over to the Eagles and they want another timeout. So the second timeout on the floor before the first media timeout. And we'll go on ahead, let's keep it here. Brian, what have the Rattlers been doing well? Why are the Eagles having to burn all these timeouts in the early going? They just haven't figured out the Rattler offense, to be honest with you. The Rattlers able to get their way, getting the ball into the paint, getting easy scores right there and Aaron passed, but yet the play was still there. The Rattlers had cuts going into the paint and Oklahoma Christian University just haven't found the answer. And I mean, with this 10-0 run by the Rattlers to start off the game, I'd be calling timeouts too if I was uh, Oklahoma Christian. Mm -hmm. And the, the other thing about the Rattlers that impresses me is it's not one player that's doing it to Oklahoma Christian. You see, Kiowa on the board, you see uh, uh, your part Elias on the board along with Efridge and then of course Pullins who has the four points. So not only is it just one player who's beating you and has come out hot, it's the entire Rattler offense that's come out. And on the other end, they're playing tremendous offense as well. And I think that's what this timeout is for. They, they have to try to get on the board here. You need a bucket. You can't fall behind early to this Rattler team because they're so explosive and they can just keep trading buckets with you down the way. And let's not forget, Kiara Etheridge already has a handful of rebounds to start off the game. So the Rattlers dominating the boards as well. Okay, we resume play. Still the same five on the floor for the Eagles. This ball swung up to Martin. And they're trying to look for the post player here. Instead, it's Stevens. They do eventually get it into the post, and they're going to get Bria Bell for a block there. As Stanford is able to draw the foul. And now we see... Etheridge exiting the game and Morgan Pullins coming in. Really those three, the three-headed monster that is the Rattler post players. Of course the Rattlers roll very deep with even more post players should they need them, especially Galindo who's been effective in her limited minutes off the bench and another blocking foul and that's going to be on Kiowa. Leah Kiowa, the defensive stopper for this Rattler team. She also says that <laughs> now they're going to call a hold on Morgan Pullins as well, but back to Kiowa. She, she said in an interview during media day that she's the best one-on-one -on -one player on the entire team. She could take them, no doubt. And that's saying a lot when you're going up against players with the likes of Jackie Woods. And now a five-second violation being called against the Eagles. 
The Rattlers with four team fouls. The Eagles with two team fouls. It's Kiyo Back out to Elias. Swing the ball over to Woods. Kind of just moving the zone defense right now, looking for the entry. There's a swing pass. Woods, the pump fake. Now goes to the basket. And they're going to call that one on the floor. An offensive foul, actually, on Woods there. Now Etheridge will head into the game, and Pullins will head out. The past several sequences right there, the referees have been a little whistle-happy, in my opinion. Yes, indeed. That have called a total of four fouls. As, oh, Elias gets the block there. The rejection Woo. out of her. And now Kiowa pushing the tempo down the floor. Back to Etheridge with the step, the floater. No good. But Etheridge gains the offensive rebound. Oh, and the Eagle defense is there. And ball last touched by the Rattlers. So it'll go back to the Eagles. And another platoon swap now for the Eagles. Brian, do you think this is a philosophy thing or that they're just trying to find a, a combination that works for them on the floor by just completely swapping out? It might be, in my opinion, it could be a philosophy thing as a foul is called on Jackie Woods and that'll be her second. Oh, excuse me, her first foul. But to answer your question, I believe it could be a philosophy thing. Instead of swapping out one or two players at a time, you get a fresh set every substitution you make. As a foul called on Bria Bell down low there. And you'll see Galindo enter into the fray for the first time today. As the Eagles over these past three possessions have already managed to get their way into the one and one bonus with 14.58 remaining. And this was over a span of just over a minute, so it, the Rattlers. It feels a lot longer, but because of the whistles blowing, yes. a lot of time not really coming off the clock. And the Eagles getting on the board for the first time today. But if it is a ph philosophical thing, it makes sense then that they would have so many players come down and be on this team for the Eagles. 16 total players here today, and already we've seen 15 of them play. As here comes Galindo down the floor. Oh, she missed the layup. And now the Eagles will come right back. And Kiowa able to grab the offensive rebound. And if it is a philosophical thing, Brian, do you agree with it? I know there's something to be said for getting into the, a groove and trying to feel your way into a game. It's kind of difficult to do that when you're making these platoon swaps, is it not? Yes, it is, but with a 3-1 and one record, Oklahoma Christian, uh, as a shot is put up by Keo and missed, Oklahoma Christian University, they're 3-1. and one. If it's been working for them thus far, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? As an offensive foul is called there on the Eagles. <laughs> And now we see the first time today that the Eagles will make a singular substitution. <laughs> Caitlin Morris will come into the game. And right now, Oklahoma Christian in, in a full court press right now. And the Rattlers able to beat it and they get a three on one opportunity with it and capitalize. And that's exactly what you have to do against the press. You have to not only beat the press, but you have to make them pay with the easy two. And that was a beautiful no-look pass by Elias right there as she gets a steal. And look look at the Rattlers pushing the, the tempo a bit here. Elias, the hesitation, the shot fake, and here comes Kiowa down the lane. And it's off of her leg and over to the Eagles side. Another substitution here. Aisha Martin heading into the game for Jasmine Hinton. as the Rattlers' advantage is still at 10. Martin with the ball, now feeds it back up top to Hamilton. Back to Martin, now the turnaround hook is good. And a great job by her to get that deep post position and then be able to put it in for the two. A 
Elias with the ball up to Kiowa. Now back to Elias, trying to make the zone move a bit. Now Elias with the penetration, the floater, no good. That one last touch by the Rattlers. And we'll see Jackie Woods and Emily Troell come into the game for the first time today. And the Eagles now bringing the ball down the floor. McKee with the ball now. Zayer swinging it all the way around. Here's Hamilton driving baseline, no good, but she's able to corral her own board and a foul called against St. Mary's. That foul on Etheridge, that's her second team foul. Her second personal foul, I should say, the eighth team foul on St. Mary's. The first one put in by Hamilton. Prior to that foul, however, you have to like the help defense that uh, Kyra Littlejohn provided, uh, making the shot difficult for the Oklahoma Christian player. But unfortunately, the Rattlers were unable to get the benefit of the call and were called with a foul. Now St. Mary's with a small lineup on the floor with the exception of Galindo, the true big man in there. And I think Troel will be playing the power forward spot. She has guard skills. And speaking of guard skills, Kyra Littlejohn with a three-pointer right there. Showing tremendous patience on that play. She could have rushed the shot, but decided to gather herself, understood how the defense was playing her, and she launched up a really good shot right there and got all three. Galindo playing post defense here. Stanford, that shot no good. A foul is called. And the foul is going to be called on Troel. That's her first personal. And you hear Coach Martin's very upset right now. And I don't blame him. That it's nine to three on the team foul count. And it's kind of a bit of an imbalance, but something that St. Mary's is going to have to make sure. So Coach Martin seeking out a interpretation. Uh, Eagles, meanwhile, inbounding the ball and returning to play. The spin move by Hamilton, no good. And Troel grabs the board and now feeds it out to Littlejohn. That was a great board right there by Troel, fighting off three other Oklahoma Christian players. And then the ball security afterward was also good. Here's Little John. Oh, and she sent back Hamilton, the huge swat there. And look at Kioa able to get a piece of it and keep, allow the Rattlers to get back in transition. Turnaround jumper, no good. There's Hamilton again. And Hamilton and Troel are really battling down in the post. An offensive foul called. And with that, we'll have a media timeout. We'll take it with them. So you're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. 
buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. And welcome back everyone, sorry for the bit of a delay, the referees were reviewing a play, making sure they got the call right, but as it stands right now, 15 to 5 for your St. Mary's Rattlers, and then 1-1 one and one on the free throw line is Roz Hamilton, Hamilton so far 3 points for the Eagles, and she now makes it 4, the primary scoring outlet thus far for them. 11-21 remaining in the half. And Troel grabs the rebound, but the one, it just barely hits the baseline before she can corral it, but off of an eagle player, so no no harm right there. And Little John will bring the ball up the floor. Checking into the game for the first time today is Julie, Julia Elofo. And the Rattlers turn it over there as the Eagles came out in a trapping defense out of their zone. A three-pointer hoisted up. No good. Little John grabs the board and passes it ahead towards Woods. One on four. She dishes out to Kiowa for the three, and it's good. That was great recognition there by Woods, understanding she was going one on four, and she kicked it out for the open three. And a great job of Kiowa by filling the appropriate lane. Ball swung over the three-point attempt by McKeeves. No good, but the offensive rebound for the Eagles. Another three-pointer. This one no good as well, and that was Stanford on the shot. Kiowa with the rebound, and the Rattlers looking to push the tempo. 
That knocked away by McKee. And now substitution for the, the St. Mary's side. It's Elias coming in for Little John. So let's reset the floor for St. Mary's. It's Kioa, Elo Etho, Elias, Troel, and of course Jackie Woods out there. Jackie Woods actually not on the scoring sheet yet, but you know that when she tries to turn it up, she'll be able to do it. And you notice the Eagles seemingly at all times trying to double team the primary ball handler as Elias gets into the paint Ooh. with a great finish there by Elias. Showing the hang time right there, double pumping and getting it just by the defender. That's really impressive out of her as Roz Hamilton, the 6'2 senior, was trying to chase her down. Here is Hamilton on the offensive end now. Pass back out to her. She's going up against LOFO. Eight seconds on the shot clock. This one hoisted up for three. No good. But Hamilton on the offensive board. Another three-pointer, this time by McKee. No good again. McKee with the offensive rebound. And the easy bank shot by McKee is good. And you see Coach Martin's not happy by Elias right there. She didn't box out the shooter. She tried to leak out for the cherry pick. And, mm. you know, you get beat by that sometimes. The Eagles, the past several possessions, have just been bombing away from three as Elias bombs away and splashes home a three of her own. Elias, her sixth point on the night, and McKee tries to answer right back, but no good. LOFO with the board. Here's Woods pushing in transition, the in and out move, and she's able to draw the foul. And I like the aggressive attitude by Woods there. She knew she was going to take the hit and just decided to go to the free throw line and try to knock down the free throws. See, three substitutes are going to come in for the Eagles here. Galindo will enter as well. As Galindo will come in for LOFO. Hamilton, Stanford, and Morris will exit for the Eagles. As Newberry, Martin, and Havens come in. And Woods makes the second at the free throw line. She's on the scoring sheet for the first time today. Havens with the ball, working against Galindo. The sky hook is good for two out of her. A swooping right-hander on that play. Beautiful move. Here's Kioa, the hesitation to the pull-up. Oh, what a great move out of her. That hesitation move right there by Kioa. Freezing the defense, allowing her to get the easy open jump shot. The ball in the hands of Martin, and it's deflected by a Rattler player. So 16 on the shot clock, 8.07 on the game clock. And the Eagles barely inbounding the ball before the five second violation. Ball reposted into Havens. Another hook shot, no good this time. And Elias manages to come away with it. Oh, but her pocket's picked. And oh, a missed layup. Stevens not able to get that one down. And here comes the Rattlers. Elias will settle down the offense. 20 seconds on the shot clock. As you see the Eagles falling back into that zone defense. Here's Kioa. Oh, not able to get the finish. This one fed into the corner, back up to Martin. Martin with the three ball, no good. And Troel able to grab it down. Here comes Elias. The Eagles are gonna have to find something else to do if they're gonna keep bombing threes because it definitely hasn't been working for them thus far. Siegel Lindo trying to work in the pass and Woods gets stripped. Great active hands by the Eagles there. And we are below the eight minute mark, 7.07 on the clock to be exact. So another media timeout. We'll head to break with them as you're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000 you'll face major legal fees, major fines, 
and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back, Rattler Nation. A 16-point advantage for St. Mary's as Ra Cairo Littlejohn has checked into the game for Galindo. Ball inbounded to Kioa. Kioa calling for the ball. Now she'll go to the rim. Kioa not able to get the finish. Substitutions on the other end. Hinton coming into the game for the Eagles. So Rattlers are able to create the turnover there in transition. Here's Elias. Oh, great moves. Oh, oh, Little John, the equally great moves. Wow. Don't do them like that. Come on now. <laughs> that was just just too good. The Euro step by Little John. <laughs> Able to get the finish. And oh, double dribble violation. Going to be called on Havens as I think Elias disrupted her there. She had to pick up the dribble. And the Rattlers now with a chance to push the lead to 20. On that play, great help defense by Elias, as you said, Joe. Creating havoc and causing the turnover. Here's Kioa working her way into the paint, not able to finish the little jumper. On 25 seconds on the shot clock. And the e oh, Elias takes oh. it away from her. Elias doing everything on the defensive end. Oh, but not able to get the finish on the offensive end. You love the hustle out of Elias there, though. This one, a three-pointer by Hinton. No good. And offensive rebound by the Eagles. Troel able to contest that shot, though. And here's Little John. Little John bursting ahead of the pack. One on two is Little John, and she draws the foul. The Rowlers showing a lot of tenacity on the defensive end right now. They're doing great work there, forcing turnovers and doing a pretty good job of gaining rebounds as the first one is rattled in by Little John. And we'll see Danielle Vargas come in for the first time today for Desi Elias. And Little John, the front rim not kind there. So it'll be 29 tw to 10 for St. Mary's. Stevens bringing the ball down the floor, down to Hinton. And they're gonna get a foul called there. I believe they're gonna call it on Troel. And that'll be the 10th cumulative team foul against St. Mary. So double bonus the rest of the way for the Eagles. That foul, the second foul against Troel. So she's in foul trouble, she'll take a seat. Galindo will enter into the game. Roz Hamilton entering back into the game. And the second free throw also good for Sydney Hill. sitting at now at an even dozen. Here's Kioa, the crossover between the legs. Ooh. Vargas, now to Woods. Woods looking for Little John. Little John, the spin move, the hesitation. Oh, no good there. Rebound claim by Hamilton and ahead of the pack for the easy two, that's Stanford. And that right there is probably the easiest basket the Eagles have had all game. If it weren't for the fact as a turnover right there for the Rattlers. And a tripping foul, or a blocking, excuse me, blocking foul is called on Little John. But if it weren't for the fact that 
the Eagles have had so many free throw opportunities, this game would be a completely different story. The Rattler is up by 15. Foul drawn by Stevens. The foul just the first on Little John. Stevens, the first one is good. As Little John will exit and Elias will enter back into the game. And the second free throw good as well for Stevens and now she'll head over to the bench as T Taylor Ward has entered into the game. 29 to 16, the advantage for St. Mary's. As we have 4.38 remaining in the half. Here's Elias, the speed, the scoop, no good. There's a great push there by Ward, but she's not able to get the finish. That one thrown up for three, no good. And Hamilton able to grab the rebound and a foul is gonna be called. It's gonna be on Kiowa, that's her second team foul. So she'll have to be careful with foul trouble. I believe LOFO is going to come in for her. And the first free throw good for Hamilton. Hamilton, the second free throw, also good. She's made a living there with her six points. As we now see Elias bringing the ball down the floor. And the Eagles have strayed away from their zone defensive and have turned into somewhat of a, a trapping defense. It's a very aggressive man-to-man. -man. St. Mary's has to be careful about the passing lanes in this defense as Woods will draw the foul. It's going to be on Hinton. And now a substitution as Gonzac is going to come into the game. Vargas looking to inbound the ball. She does so to LOFO. Now over to Woods at the top of the arc. Bullet pass, but it's picked off by Hamilton. Hamilton, the post player, bringing the ball down the floor and able to find Gonzac for the easy two, and the Rattlers need a timeout after that one. Coach Martin's not happy with the way his team has been playing, and now their once insurmountable lead is down to single digits, only nine. And you're watching St. Mary's Basketball on the Rattler Network. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. And welcome back, Rattler Nation. 29 to 20, the advantage for your St. Mary's Rattlers. As Brian, you've been talking about it. The Eagles able to find their way back into the game. Now just a nine-point lead. What do the Rattlers need to improve on, and what have the Eagles done to confound them? The Eagles just have been capitalizing on free throw opportunities and have just been capitalizing also on quick transition points and it's allowed them to get back into this game. Well, and I guess I'll go ahead and I'll take the second question. What do the Rattlers have to do in order to get back into the game as there's five seconds on the shot clock here? 
Woods with the ball. She's going to have to create for her team. And a foul is called. And that'll be against Havens. And I think Woods went on ahead and answered the question right for me. If you're St. Mary's, you have a dominant score like Jackie Woods, a preseason All-American. You have to get her some touches. You have to try to get her going. Only one point in the first 16 and a half minutes is not enough from your, all, your superstar athlete. You have to get her more touches and try to get her involved in the game. Because if you have that player that can take over the game like the Rattlers have, you got to be able to get them going in the early stages of the game. And Woods, definitely a great asset to have as displayed on that previous possession. Shot clock running down. Give the ball to her and let her do her thing. Galindo challenged there and an easy two for Stanford. As Woods now bringing the ball up the floor. Three minutes remaining in the first half. Here's Woods. She'll receive a screen from Galindo. She's immediately double teamed. Oh, <laughs> Kind of a look what I found moment for <laughs> LOFO, but she's not able to get the finish. And Elias pestering the Eagles in the backcourt, but they're just barely able to get it across before the half, before the 10 second violation. The 10 second violation being implemented for the first time this season in women's basketball. Usually they try not to implement it because the shot clock is 30 seconds in women's basketball as opposed to the 35. But the implementation of the 10 second violation makes it more exciting basketball to watch as players have to get into their offense slightly earlier. And overall, I, I, I like the rule. I think it's a good one to have in women's basketball. As a 3-2 defense now for the Eagles. Woods in the corner. And she's able to knock down the three, and that's the prototypical way to beat a 3-2 defense with those corner buckets. Seems to me Jackie Woods heard us, or heard you for that matter, Joe, talking about how she needs to get more involved in the offense as, oh, what a beautiful move right there by Woods, slicing her way through the defense. But back to Woods, she scored the last several points, I believe the last five points for the Rattlers, so... She's definitely leaving her mark towards the end of this half. As Elias now with a corner jumper from the free throw line, no good as Ward is able to corral the rebound. And the thing about the Eagles that also might be discombobulating the Rattlers, they come out in multiple different types of defenses. You saw them start out with a man as that three-pointer is knocked down by Havens. And then they went to a 2-3 defense for a great deal of time. And now in a 3-2 defense and kind of disguising their defense as well. And you know, it's very difficult to score consistently against defensive changes. And in a way, I believe that the defenses have definitely, or the changes in the defenses have taken the Rattlers off guard and a little bit off their game. Yeah, and it's something that Coach Martins has to adjust for as well. He has to try to have the right personnel in in order to beat the defense that his team is going against. Here's Hamilton. And a good pass over there into the corner, but no good. And Galindo able to grab the board. 35 seconds remaining on the game clock. St. Mary's pushing the tempo. Galindo with a mismatch down low. Great pass by Woods. And the, the recognition by Woods and Galindo, knowing the mismatch would be generated by the transition defense. Very good by the Rattlers. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, and Galindo with the rejection. Here comes Woods pushing the ball. And she misses the lay-in. Three seconds, two, one. And that'll do it for the first half. So St. Mary's at one time leading by 19, goes into the locker room with a nine point advantage as we're heading to the half. Brian, what did you like out of St. Mary's in closing that half? Definitely just pushing the, the envelope and pushing the issue, creating great opportunities. Jackie Woods got herself going towards the end of the half and the Rattlers ended in a flourish, a great block by Galindo to conclude matters for the half, and the Rattlers nursing a nine-point lead right now, 
but look for them to make some adjustments because the Eagles defense, the changes, the constant changes have definitely disrupted the Rattlers offensive rhythm. Well, the Rattlers on a 15 minute break, us not so much, the halftime show coming up next as you're watching Rattler basketball on the Rattler Network.
David Tovar up to his usual shenanigans during the halftime show. Roughly 8.30 remaining in the half, but let's go on ahead. Let's start off this halftime show. Brian McGlue, you on Joe Rodriguez here. Break down the statistics and the key points that we're seeing. And Brian, to you, what's the main thing that just sticks out to you more than anything else during this game today? Well, it's been the amount of fouls and the free throw opportunities that Oklahoma Christian University has had in the first half. In my opinion, without the free throws that they've attempted, they're, they're nowhere near a nine point deficit. The Rattlers fortunate enough to still be in the lead, however, because of all the costly fouls and Oklahoma Christian not able to execute as well offensively. However, their defense also give their defense a lot of credit, a lot of changes in their defense throughout the course of the half, causing somewhat of a bit of confusion for the Rattlers. The Rattlers never seeming to get into a rhythm throughout the course of the half. It'll be interesting to see how the Rattlers respond in the second half. And I think to me, the main thing that sticks out for Oklahoma Christian, one of 12 from the three-point line, something you just cannot have. It's I know those are open shots, most of them, but still you have to try to get into the paint and at that same token, St. Mary's shooting 44.8% to the 25.8% of Oklahoma Christian. But then you ask yourself, why is this game so close then? Why, why is St. Mary's not completely and totally running away with it? And I gotta tell you, it's because of rebounding. Oklahoma Christian leading, leading the rebounding edge 25, sorry, 23 to 17. They have eight offensive rebounds. And with those long three-point shots come long rebounds and the Eagles able to corral eight of them. I know that has to be a point of focus in the St. Mary's locker room during this halftime break. And Joe, speaking of rebounds, Oklahoma Christian, they have six second chance points to the Rattlers zero. So that's an alarming statistic if you're a St. Mary's Rattler. Well, and on the other side, let's go on ahead. Let's break down some individual statistics. Kiara Etheridge, the big rebounder for St. Mary's, only able to play seven minutes in that first half. She did have four rebounds in that span of time, but again, the two fouls, really an issue for St. Mary's. They have four players with two fouls right now, and all of those players, very crucial for St. Mary's. Etheridge, Poland, Keola, and Troel. If you're St. Mary's, you're gonna have to play better defense. You're gonna have to move your feet. You're gonna have to play defense with your feet and not your hands. It has to be an emphasis for them. And then of course, you're gonna have to box out and get those rebounds. St. Mary's was pulling away with this game in the early stages. I think that was mainly because of not only an Oklahoma Christian slow start, but St. Mary's was matching them on the boards in the early going as well. And speaking of defense, we saw a little bit of the Rattler defense picking up the tempo towards the end of the half and the end of the half was capitalized by a block by I believe it was uh, Galindo. Galindo yes Galindo able to get a block to cap or to cap off the first half let's see if the Rattlers can continue that defensive intensity in the second half they were able to finish off strong and of course Speaking of finishing strong, Jackie Woods was able to leave her mark towards the end of the second, or the first half, excuse me. Yes, indeed. Roughly under five minutes remaining in the halftime break. You see the Rattlers taking the floor. And we're gonna go on ahead, we'll take a break with them as you're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. The second half, coming up. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. Thank you. 
Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We got the spirit, we're hot, we can't be stopped. We're gonna beat them and bust them. The bust smallest them. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call or visit fatherhood.gov to learn more. Just under two minutes remaining in the half, and we remind you, Rattler fans, tweet at us, at St. Mary's Rattlers. At the same time, that's our same handle for Instagram, at St. Mary's Rattlers. And then, of course, check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers. And if you come out to the games for, like, a throwback Thursday game like we're having today, as I'm sure you can hear the tunes of Outcast playing in your ears, you'll have... Various competitions that can be held during the game. We'll be giving out hashtags in order for people to tweet us at during the games. And you could win a various amount of gift cards. And all of it, of course, the brainchild of Chad Peters and the brand new Rattler Network. So be sure to come out to the next home game that you can for your Lady Rattlers. That next home game will be against Texas Women's. That'll be on November 27th, so just the day before Thanksgiving. Just under one minute remaining until the second half. Stay tuned, Rattler fans, for the exciting conclusion between the Oklahoma Christian University Eagles and your St. Mary's Rattlers. Welcome back, Rattler fans, to beautiful Bill Grehe Arena for the start of the second half. The starting five on the floor for St. Mary's, Desi Elias, Leah Keola, Jackie Woods, Morgan Pullins, and Kiara Etheridge as we see Elias. A little bit too much space there, and she's able to knock down the easy free throw line jumper to start off the second half. Elias, that her eighth point of the game, a great outlet from her. Oh, a nice scoop off of a cross. A great move in the finish by Sydney Hill. So the two teams coming out firing. So here comes Kiowa going down the paint. No, she gets stripped. Ball taken by Hamilton. Here's Hill. That one laid up, but no good. And oh. Players hitting the floor everywhere. You hear Coach Martins asking for the over the back call. Here's Hamilton, 4-3, no good. And Elias comes away with the board. She's pushing the tempo. And now she'll just pull it out. On the floor for the Eagles, they're starting five as well. It's McKee, Hill, Morris, Wayne, and Hamilton. And Elias now with the floater, the double clutch, no good. There's Hamilton with the offensive board. 
Hill bringing the ball down the floor. Here's McKee for three. No good. Woods able to come away from it. Oh, and Hamilton with the active hands able to take it away. Fast-paced tempo to start off this second half. And the three fired away. No good. Hamilton, another offensive rebound. Here's McKee now, and she's able to get it. We see Hamilton being the impact player for the Eagles so far. Her scoring at six, very impressive. Her rebounding, impressive as well. The Eagles in a 2-3 zone, and no one picked up Wood. She fires the three, no good. There's Etheridge with the putback 4-2. That was an impressive one-handed rebound by Etheridge right there, and an even more impressive putback under duress. Here's McKee, the pump fake got Kiowa in the air, and she gets another two to go. And so both teams coming out firing and scoring to start out the second half. Brian, if you're the Rattlers, are you okay with this high pass, high octane start? Well, this is the typical type of play that we're accustomed to seeing the Rattlers play, so it fits right into their game plan. Here's Elias over to Woods now. Pullins in the post, a great swing through move. Oh, but she's not able to get the finish. A shot put up, no good. Woods, the box out on the shooter. Good job by her. Ahead to Pullins. Pullins, no good on the left-handed layup. So the Eagles now bringing the ball down the floor. Here's Hamilton, oh, that one rejected. That was Wayne, actually. The ball trickles out, no good. Another offensive rebound, and one for Hinton. And wait, I believe we have a, yes, a travel has been overruled. Both officials making the call, but the official with the travel had his hand up first. So that is the call that will go. We now see Stanford coming into the game. Wayne will head over to the bench for the Eagles. 16-33 remaining. Oh, what a pass and a good finish by Pullins. And Elias creating offense for her teammate there with the penetration. And that's what you get with a great, quick player like Desi Elias who gets her hand in the cookie jar and steals it away and gets it to Woods who... Palming. He's called for the carry. The Allen Iverson rule enforced <laughs> on Woods there. <laughs> the recently retired Allen Iverson. Yes, indeed. As we see a couple of substitutions for the Eagles. Martin coming into the game along with Stevens. Here's Hill with the ball off to Martin, back to Hill. Into the post to Hamilton. Here's Hill with the ball again. Back to Hamilton, but Pullins, oh! Just a bit overly aggressive there is Pullins. She'll be called for the first team foul of the half. And with that, we're underneath 16 minutes, so immediate timeout. We'll head to break with them. So you're watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. And welcome back, Rattler Nation. 30 seconds, a fresh shot clock for the Eagles. The foul being called on the floor. Oh, and Etheridge 
In the foot race with Hamilton, she comes away with the ball and Etheridge draws the foul. And you love to see a post player hustle like that and Etheridge able to create the free throw opportunity at the other end. That was a great defensive play by Etheridge, getting her hands in the passing lanes and creating, as he said, this free throw opportunity. Unable to hit the first though. Yep, and another thing I like, Morgan Pullins, three personal fouls, but still in the game for Coach Martins. I think if you're St. Mary's, you really like the offensive option that Morgan Pullins has developed into. And as such, you gotta go on ahead and try to risk her in this important game, even though she has three team fouls. And not only is she a definite offensive threat, but she's also a great rebounder as well. Her and Etheridge combining for over half of the Rattlers' rebounds this season. And another thing that you know St. Mary's done, Hamilton has been one of the main scoring options for the Eagles. Instead of having Pullins guarding her, now Etheridge has switched over and she'll be guarding her. And a foul called there. And Martin will be going to the foul line for two free throws for the Eagles. And foul called on Woods, her second. And the foul shot is knocked down coolly and calmly by Martins. And Martin knocks down the second as well. That puts her at four points. And the Rattler lead at eight. Kiowa with the ball. Back up to Elias. Here's Woods now. Surveying the field, the court. And oh, a dangerous pass by Kiowa, but Etheridge, what tremendous hands. Not able to get the finish. Pullins, though, the offensive board, and she puts it in for two. Pullins pulling in the rebound and getting it up for the shot. I like that one. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> <laughs> we see Ward into the game. She checked in during the media timeout. Oh, and Elias once again playing Active great off-ball right defense. There. Ooh, Ooh behind the back Don't move. do it like that. <laughs> oh, man. She put the defender on skates right there. And oh, a player falling down for the Eagles. Elias, the lay-in, no good. Here's Pullins, though. And that's what St. Mary's has been lacking in that first half, the offensive rebounding. But on back-to-back -back possessions, Pullins able to not only gain an offensive rebound, but to put it up for two points. Oh, an errant pass here for the Eagles. It's going to be a backcourt violation. We see another substitution for Oklahoma Christian. Sydney Hill coming into the game. Coach Martins will counter by putting in Kiara Etheridge. I'm sorry, I beg your pardon for Little John. <laughs> and Elias will head to the bench. Little John. Oh. A tough pass to handle there, and she's not able to come down with it. And a backcourt violation to hand the ball straight back to the Eagles. Here's Hill with the ball. It's passed over to Stevens. Hamilton now working against Etheridge, who puts her hand straight up in the air. And Pullins able to grab another rebound. Etheridge ahead to Woods. Oh, but good hustle by Hamilton to get back and to deflect that pass. Hamilton now. That shot up for three and no good. And Etheridge corrals the board. Etheridge passes it off to Little John, who will set up the offense. Little John off to Etheridge. Etheridge, the hop step, the shot, no good. And that's Hill grabbing the rebound, and she'll push the tempo. Hill, the nice crossover, the jumper in the lane, no good. The offensive rebound, another offensive rebound. There's Hamilton, and she puts it in for two. And for St. Mary's, the emphasis has to be rebounding now, doesn't it? You have the 10-point lead, but you can't allow all these second-chance points. Oh, great pass by Kiowa. Here's Etheridge, no good. Little John's there, though, and she puts it in off of the offensive rebound. And speaking of rebounding, Little John, the only one to be there and get the offensive rebound, it seemed to me the Eagles were just caught watching. 
Here's Hamilton working against Etheridge. This one popped for three and good. Great shot by Stanford there. As you just see a ton of versatility out of all of the players on the floor right now. Hamilton, the big man for, oh, as Little John gets into the paint again, but no good there. Hamilton, the big man for the Eagles. She's able to handle the ball. She's able to create her own offense. The post moves, obviously. And then on the St. Mary side, their versatility well documented. Offensive rebound again for the Eagles. And this one off of a St. Mary's player and out of bounds. Bria Bell and Troel will enter into the game. Pullins and Etheridge will exit. And what I noticed on that previous possession, Stanford, who was being guarded by Pullins, was playing out on the three-point line as she lets that one fly and it is off the mark. Scrambling for the ball right there. Great fight there. Hicks able to come away with that offensive rebound amongst three St. Mary's players. This ball out of bounds. We're underneath the 12 minute mark. We're gonna go on ahead and keep it here during this media timeout. Brian, the adjustments that St. Mary's has made for the second half, what have you seen out of them? And what do you think about St. Mary's going forward? Well, for the Rattlers, they just need to execute better. And as you said, rebounding. And now a promo for David Tovar. The young man has been brought out. He'll shoot a free throw with a chance to win a gift card. So we'll just segue over to that for now. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I think David finding a, having a difficult time finding a basketball right now. <laughs> well. <laughs> And now, a debate club has broken out instead of a free throw <laughs> shooting contest. Always entertaining though, Russ and David, David always entertaining. <laughs> the banter going back and forth. <laughs> Speaking of banter, Rattler fans, be sure to check out our hit Webisonic series, Talking Rattlers, where the banter is never out of season. And, and Brian, if I were to want to watch Talking Rattlers, what website would I go to? RattlerAthletics.com. Yes, indeed. As a foul is called on Bria Bell there, her and Coach Martin seeing the hands were straight up in the air. And for Bria Bell, that's her third foul. And she's not gotten to play very much here today. And it's attributed greatly to the foul trouble as the first shot is no good for Stanford. Stanford now, a second shot upcoming. Already eight points to her name, and Rattler fans across the globe now screaming, ball, don't lie, <laughs> as Stanford misses both free throws there. Troel working over to Kiowa. Kiowa draws the foul. I believe you're going to get Havens there. And that was a great aggressive move by Kiowa, getting into the lane and drawing the foul, and now she'll be at the line for two. Kiowa, the first shot up and no good. As she's trying to break into double digits here today, she has nine points currently. Second shot up for Kiowa, and that one is good. And she will now exit the game as Desi Elias will enter. Elias and Kiowa, two of the starting guards, combining for 17 points here, or 18 points here today. So great production by the St. Mary's backcourt. Oh, a trip player, and Elias will be ahead of the field, and she gets the finish. Unfortunate there for McKee, but fortunate for St. Mary's. They lead now by a dozen. Here's Hill. Oh, oh what a wow. move! Behind the back in traffic, but she's not able to get the finish is Sydney Hill. 
Hill, who has come out very strong for this Eagle team. She's been doing it on both ends for them. Here's Little John, though, for three, and that's no good. She fell down after the three-point shot, but right back up and able to play defense is Little John. Here's McKee up to Havens. Havens swings it over to Hill. Oh, and a foul is going to be called there as Elias got a little bit of the arm, and so a little bit of a foul as well. A little or a lot, still a foul regardless, but Elias, quick hands and has been disrupting the Oklahoma Christian offense the entire game. Stanford will head over to the bench. Hamilton will head back in. Bria Bell will have the arduous task of guarding her. And I believe they're going to call a foul on the floor. That's going to be against Bell. A blocking foul will be the call. That's the fourth foul against Bell. So one more and she'd be gone. So instead, they're going to substitute Morgan Pullins into the game. Now Pullins will guard Hamilton. On that previous play, Although Bell had her hands up, she was not in position. She tried to slide under the defensive player. Good call by the referees. Oh, and a wide open three-pointer for Hill. She's offline. And now an over-the-back call is going to be on Havens. Good box out by Troel there. And the Rattlers fortunate right there. Hill wide open for three. Elias got caught cheating over, trying to get the steal, and left her, left her player open. And with that foul, Havens will head to the bench. Wayne, the starter, will head back in. Wayne yet to be on the score sheet. And now an offensive foul called against Morgan Pullins as she was not set for the screen. And for Pullins, that's going to be her fourth foul. So she's one away from being out of the game as well. So Etheridge will now have to come in. Oh, the Rattlers caught napping. But they're able to recover. Here's Hill. Oh, and she's stripped by Elias Troel on the floor. And I believe a jump ball called. Yes, indeed, a jump ball. Possession arrow pointing toward the Eagles. And once again, Desi Elias' active hands creating that loose ball. Morris will enter into the game for Hill, who will take a seat. Now here's McKee. McKee at the top of the key. Into Hamilton now who has good position. Oh, and Etheridge called for the foul even though her hands were straight up. I hear the disagreement in the stadium. But Hamilton will head to the line for two. Etheridge, her third personal. And with that, that's the Rattlers' seventh team foul. So for the remaining 9.30, the Eagles will be shooting at least one and one. And this is great strategy by the Eagles. Pound the ball inside and cause the Rattlers to foul and get some opportunities at the line. And for the rest of the game... Oh, man, bad box out there by Etheridge. But Kiowa able to steal the ball and bail her out. But as I was mentioning earlier, the Rattlers now in, or excuse me, the Eagles in the bonus. So they'll be shooting free throws for the remainder of the game as another foul is called. This time, I believe it's on Little John. Yes, indeed. And that'll be the 18th foul against St. Mary. So they'll be heading down to the line to shoot one and one. Little John, her second team foul. We saw her almost get the incredible finish on the end, and she tried to hustle back and get the ball. And now Kylie Hicks will shoot the ball. The first one, oh no. Just a bit outside for Hicks. Rowdy Rattlers will go on ahead and take credit for that one. And with 9-10 remaining to play, the Rattlers' lead is 11. It's Elias off to Little John. Little John creating, but no good. Etheridge amongst three Eagles, able to get the offensive rebound. 
and she'll be rewarded with a foul and two shots at the free throw line. Etheridge so far today, four points to her name as she gets the first one to go there. That foul was the third personal foul for Roz Hamilton, the senior center. And Hamilton pulls down that rebound. Here comes Sanford up the floor. And the ball knocked out of play by St. Mary's. So 21 on the shot clock, 8.49 on the game clock. Hamilton with the ball in the post. They repost it back to her. The left-handed hook, good for two. And as you can see right there, Joe, Etheridge could not be as aggressive as she would have liked, just keeping her hands straight up, almost allowing for the easy lay-in. There's Kiowa with the ball, the pass to Troel. Now the Rattlers trying to move the defense of the Eagles. Kiowa looking to create, and oh, she threw it out of play. And Elias not able to get over to it. 8.21 remaining in the half. And the referee blew the whistle for the media timeout, but that is under the eight-minute mark. Just a tad bit off by a couple seconds. Yeah, not, not too bad. <laughs> Just kind of warning everybody. This is the media timeout warning. <laughs> As Elias with the steals warning, another one to her name, the floater in transition. No good, too strong off the glass. You see everyone scrambling for the rebound there. And the Eagles coming away with it. Hamilton, a three, no good. Etheridge able to grab the board. Kiowa leaves it for Elias. Elias working. Now off to Little John. Little John driving into the paint. Here's Kiowa, the spin move. And that's no good. Etheridge, though, finds the offensive board. Oh, no good on the putback. But Kiowa is able to get it. Here's Little John now going into the paint. Off to Elias. Kiowa now hoists a three, and that's good. As the Rattlers continue to keep the Eagles at a distance, their lead now at 13. McKee with the ball, off to Hamilton, off to Hicks now. McKee now with the three, that's no good. Elias grabs the rebound, and a foul is going to be called against the Eagles. And with that, we will be underneath the eight minute mark. So, media timeout. So, you're watching Rattler basketball on the Rattler Network. Your Rattlers leading by 13. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. And welcome back, Rattler Nation. 56-43, the advantage for St. Mary's. As we see a full court press being put on by the Eagles. A ball fed ahead to Little John. Now back to Elias, and the Eagles will have to retreat. Elias, the floater, oh, that's rejected by Hamilton. I like the aggressive mindset out of Elias, though. Knowing that the press was broken, the Eagles would be in scramble mode. 
and as such she decided to attack but good hustle back by Hamilton to get the block. 10 seconds on the shot clock for St. Mary's. Here's Woods. Off to Little John. Little John getting into the paint. McKee though with the ball. Now Etheridge. And it'll be a jump ball. And St. Mary's will have one second on the shot clock to operate with. So it'll be it'll have to be a catch and shoot. Kiowa looking for Woods. The floater, no good. And Elias coming down amongst the trees, but not able to get the rebound. Or not able to get the bucket, I should <laughs> say. <laughs> Hamilton gaining the board for the Eagles. And now Hamilton in transition. The hesitation, the left hand, no good. Little John. And she stepped on the, ba the outside line. And so it'll be 16 seconds on the shot clock for the Eagles. Great hustle, however, by Little John to try to get to that loose ball. Ball inbounded to Stanford. Here's Hamilton against Etheridge. Hamilton dishes the ball off. That no good for three, but an offensive rebound out of the Eagles. Turn and shoot, and good. Martin able to get the finish there. Great play by Martin, faking to turn to the middle, and oh, and what a move as I'm talking. Etheridge with a nice reverse lay and finishing it on the right side, kissing it off the glass. And now the Eagles looking to respond. Here's Hamilton. Hamilton with the step. Off to McKee, 4-3, it's good. McKee now with nine points in the contest. Elias being pressed full court and a reach and foul will be called. That'll be on McKee. The fifth team foul against, the 16th foul I should say against the Eagles. So they just put that one up on the board. Troel entering into the game for Little John. And if you're the Eagles, that right there is not what you want to do. Foul early on in the press. What you want to do with the press is to cause the Rattlers to eat some clock as a great move by Leah Kiowa driving with her right hand. But the point of the press is to cause a team to eat some clock and create some havoc. And really to try to pick off on turnovers based on the passing lane as an offensive rebound there by McKee batted over to Hamilton. Here's Hill now. Free throw line jumper, no good. And that ball hit the baseline, so it'll go over to St. Mary's. So Troel has entered into the game. I think on that last play, Hill initially wanted to pass it off but great defense by I believe Jackie Woods to cause her to change her mind midair and Hill was forced to take the bad shot as a foul is called on the court and it'll be Elias that'll head to the line for the one and one opportunity the foul will be on Logan McKee her first and Elias will head to the line for a one-on-one -one situation. And she knocks down the first. <laughs> 61-48 for St. Mary's. And that's no good. Oh, it's St. Mary's trying to hustle in. Uh, Etheridge the last to touch it. So the scramble results in an eagle ball. Hill will bring it up the floor. She'll be guarded by Elias. Hill getting into the paint. Oh, I think Great. Elias got a piece of that one. Great defense by Elias. Oh, and Elias. Oh, oh. and I think they're going to get Etheridge for a walk there. And with that, our final media time out of the game. And as we do for every single time, that we have a media timeout, the final one of the game. We're going to go on ahead and have 
a discussion about who you think will be the player of the game. But first, a promo by our Mr. David Tovar. He found a basketball. <laughs> This, I believe, for a Chick-fil-A gift card of $25. Oh! Oh, it's like bowling. You get a second opportunity. <laughs> oh, just the unkind roll. <laughs> oh, very unfortunate for that young man, but let's go on ahead. Let's talk about our Rattlers. 13 points, the advantage, 354 remaining. First, Brian, tell me how comfortable you feel if you're St. Mary's right now. To be honest, I wouldn't be that comfortable with a 13-point lead against a team as capable as Oklahoma Christian. Oklahoma Christian University, the Eagles definitely showing a lot of heart and a lot of grit, making it difficult for the Rattlers to pull away. The Rattlers early on had a 19-point lead and the Eagles cutting it down to single digits at one point. So 354 left, plenty of time to make a comeback. Okay, now let's get into the discussion that we do whenever we hit the four minute mark. Who do you have for your player of the game, your Rattler of the game, Brian? Well, so we see a turnover created here, three on one for St. Mary's. And Troel will go on ahead and pull the ball out and the Rattlers will set, off the, set up the offense and run some time off the clock. Well. To be honest, there are a lot of Rattler players that have contributed. Scoring this game has been even, but I'd have to say Desi Elias, she's been very productive. 100% from the three-point line, made her one attempt from behind the arc, shooting 40% from the field, and creating havoc on the defensive end. She's, she's credited with four steals, and not to mention dishing him out as well, so as we see her at the line right now, so Desi Elias definitely has her fingerprints all over this game. And I'm gonna go with Leah Kioa, the leading scorer for the St. Mary squad today. She's sitting at 15 points on 50% shooting from the field. She's four of eight, and also knocked down a three-pointer, so a very game for the two wing players of St. Mary's, as Elias looking to add to hers and St. Mary's total here in the closing minutes. Second free throw by Elias, no good. She now sits at 12 points. Hamilton with the ball, over to McKee. She's checked by Kiowa. This one thrown up for three, no good. Oh, McKee with the offensive rebound. Now Stevens into Hamilton, and they're gonna call Hamilton for an offensive foul there as she barreled into Etheridge. Hamilton swinging the elbow right there and caught Etheridge right on the jaw. Etheridge, that's her fourth personal foul. So one away from being disqualified from the remainder of the game. And St. Mary's is going to have a brief break. Oh, and Kiowa, she's barreled into by Stevens. And she'll head to the line for two. As a good job by St. Mary's of breaking the press and trying to make the Eagles pay for it now at the free throw line. Great passes led to that easy layup opportunity and the Rattler is able to get the benefit of the call right there. As Unfortunately, <laughs> the free throw is not made. Kiowa, 15 points here today. And the second one, no good. And just as Rattler fans were saying earlier, Stevens and Eagles fans probably saying ball don't lie. <laughs> it's a universal thing. I think everyone can appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, and we have uh, Rashid Wallace to thank for that one. Yes, indeed, and foul called against Etheridge, her fourth personal. And now Martin heading to the line for the Eagles. Her six point put in there as she'll now try to have the Eagles break the 50-point barrier. And that one good as well. We remind you, Rattler fans, the Christmas season is coming up. And if you want a 
new jersey just like the lady rattlers are sporting new jerseys this year or even a hoodie or t-shirt or any other kind of rattler apparel to check out rattlergear.com and for a limited time only any order of over fifty dollars at rattlergear.com will result in you receiving a free rattler mug so a great promotion out of the brand new rattlergear.com and also remind you check us out on all social media as oh that three-pointer from long distance is thrown up and hit by Stevens. Check us out at rattlerathletics.com, at Twitter and Instagram, at St. Mary's Rattlers. And of course, for all the archived videos of St. Mary's, including this here broadcast, check out youtube.com slash St. Mary's Rattlers. 140 remaining, Kiowa with a three, it's good. It's really been the story of the second half. Anytime that Oklahoma Christian has pushed and gotten the lead down a little bit, St. Mary's able to answer right back with a push of their own. And Kiowa answering the three by Stevens. It looked like she shot it all the way from the parking lot. So showing her range and definitely making Oklahoma Christian pay for leaving her that open. Hamilton with the ball in the post. She passes it out, the three-pointer, no good. And Pullins grabs the board. Woods will bring it down the floor leisurely, trying to kill clock here. 1.05 remaining in the game, Kiowa. With another bucket would beat, would break the 20 point barrier. Here's Woods. Receiving the double team. Elias now with the ball. Five seconds on the shot clock. Elias will have to hoist it up. And it's in and out, no good. Rebound grabbed by Martin. Three pointer by Havens, it's good. So the Eagles refuse to go quietly into the sunset, but with only 33 seconds on the game clock, St. Mary's is looking to have the game well in hand. I hope I did not put the jinx on them there. <laughs> Remind you also, Rattler fans, the next time your St. Mary's Rattlers will be in action will be against Texas women's. That'll be the day before Thanksgiving, November 27th, and then against St. Thomas on November 30th as this three-pointer is no good, and that'll do it for the game. St. Mary's will look to dribble out the clock. Steven steals the ball, but no good, and that'll do it for the final. So, Rattler fans, be sure to check out the St. Mary's Rattlers either on November 27th or November 30th. That can be at here at Bill Grehe Arena or, of course, at the home of Rattler Athletics, rattlerathletics.com. Brian, St. Mary's able to get the nine-point victory here today, 95-56. to 56. What, what did they do in order to get this vi victory here today? They played very disciplined basketball. The Rattlers didn't play out of character, if you will. They definitely made... Uh, good decisions with the basketball limited their turnovers and their defensive intensity was definitely one to be proud of and definitely was the turning point of the game as you see both teams breaking out Oklahoma Christian they move to three and two on the year while St. Mary's moves to four and one on the season St. Mary's remains perfect at home 3-0 to start the season at Bill Grehe Arena. Both teams yet to lose so far at home. We're going to take a brief break, and then we're going to have an interview with Coach Martins here. So you've been watching Rattler Basketball on the Rattler Network.
And welcome back, everyone, to Bill Grehe Arena, your St. Mary's Rattlers victorious here today. Coach Martins, your team, they got out to an early lead here today. How did you do it, and how did you hold home court? We, you know, we just talked about defensive intensity, and I thought our defense was really good tonight. I mean, we did foul, but, uh, you know, I mean, defensively, we got after it. Um, you know, and that's what we've been really working on all week in practice. We talked about focused on the defense and just working, and they, and they really got after it today. And you talk about the foul trouble that your team got into in the earlier stages, but you have great depth coming off of the bench. What does it mean when those post players are able to come in and fill in for uh, the starters? Hey, you know, it was just musical chairs right there. We just kept on finding different people, doing different things, and, that, and that's a great thing. we got 11 players on our roster, and all 11 can, can, can do things to contribute. And so sometimes, you know, that, that they might not get in certain games, but then other games are going to step up and be big, and I thought... They did that again tonight. I thought Big O came in and did a lot of things well early in the you know the second half there. She got a couple points, got a rebound. I mean, those are some things we need to get out of our girls. And a fun question on the side, David, I know not very kind to your Chiefs, but I actually picked your Chiefs to win uh, their, their conference early on. What do you think about your Chiefs, just real quick? Hey, you know, it was a tough game out in Denver. You know, it's tough to win out there in that place. You know, the nice thing is Peyton Manning has to come to Kansas City to Arrowhead and find a way to win in Arrowhead. And that's right. always a tough place to be. Great victory, All right, Coach. Thank you guys. 3-0 on the season at Bill Grehe Arena are the St. Mary's Rattlers. Come check them out November 27th, and that game will be here, of course, on RattlerAthletics.com. I'm Joe Rodriguez for Brian McGluyuan and everyone on the broadcast. Take care. Yeah.